the DNA of, or that's what we're looking at with those CCFC cases, um, what makes a competitive firm in the Caribbean. And the guys in St. Lucia, the ladies in St. Lucia, Vimla and Hyacinth looked at Baron Foods, which opened its operations in 1991. It's a family owned business specializing in the production of sauces, spices, condiments, etc. Initially, they started off with staff of about 25 and making 12 products. By 2013, they expanded to 75 products, sorry, 75 members of staff and 160 products, exporting 55% of total sales to um, the English and French speaking Caribbean, the USA, England, Slovakia, Germany, Canada, St. Martin, and St. Thomas. A number of their staff have stayed with them for quite a while. At least 40% of the employees have been with the company for over 20 years, 30% of the employees between 15 to 20 years, and the rest are, um, have been with the company for less than 15 years. And these are just some of the goals to which the company aspires. Uh, sustaining quality and standards, utilization of current appropriate technology, training of employees, and honoring of its financial obligations in a timely manner. That's one of the questions I posed to Levi as well, um, the importance of cash flow management to his business. As was mentioned in the previous presentation, standards and certification is important to Baron Foods as well. In 2003, the company was HACCP certified. In 2008, um, they obtained the ISO certification, and in 2011, the FSSC um, 2010 standard. Brand Foods ensures compliance with all of their standards um, at all levels of the manufacturing process. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to go through um, the SWOT analysis that was done um, by my colleagues, but. It includes things like um, a strong export orientation as part of their strengths um, in terms of weaknesses, or there's one mentioned, um, high input costs, the others really are threats, opportunities, um, ready access, ready access to product knowledge through the farmers um, that they have a very strong relationship with, and other strengths identified, obviously the current economic recession, political instability and low growth. Um, their local competition um, comprises Fruitsea, 12 employees, minimal exports to two Caribbean islands, and also Viking Traders, which has 50 employees. It's HACCP certified, and they export to Europe, Canada, and the Caribbean. Some financial data of note really are the percentage export figures of St. Lucia and the export figures of Jamaica compared to the USA and Mexico. In both cases, they're less than 1%. And if you compare that with 13% in 2006 for the USA, and 2.3 in Mexico, it says that there is huge potential for export growth um, for barren foods. And I think when you hear a number of the other cases as well, you'll see a similar trend replicating. There is tremendous potential for greater export growth if we just tap into the ex those markets. And part of it may have to do um, with our proximity to markets, but of course we can always examine that issue um, during discussion. This is the value chain for Baron Foods, um, raw materials, other inputs, um, the processing of the raw materials into finished product. They do bottling and packaging, storage of the finished goods, and of course, distribution um, to the various export markets. Um, analysis of the value chain. Um, from the research conducted, they use the Porto model as the foundation for mapping the value chain of Baron Foods, identifying the company's final markets, identifying the company's key functions, and identifying the participants performing each function. They recognize a couple of things through their analysis of the value chain, is that BFL has a good understanding of what 
customers value in their products. Um, they recognize that strategic collaboration is important throughout the entire value chain. And from what they had acknowledged is that there's a strong relationship between Barron Foods and the farmers. Because obviously if you're into agro-processing, you need to have a constant and reliable supply of agricultural input. And they ensure that the farmers have access to water and other chemicals, etc., to ensure that they have that continuous annual supply of foods for their manufacturing. They're always focused on continuous Im um, improvement, and if you're going to obviously um, keep your ISO certification or your HACCP certification, then you need to focus on continuous improvement. Um, culture, vi vision, and leadership shape the structure and processes of barren foods. Um, it was also realized that there must be a clear understanding of culture, customs, and economic conditions. And that there was a concerted effort to learn about the laws and regulations and logistics for the UK market. And perhaps that is key, I think that was mentioned in an earlier presentation as well, getting to know the market um, that you want to enter and do business in. Efforts are concentrated on acquiring standards and becoming certified. The purchasing of high quality fresh produce and other inputs and excellent product presentations and fast delivery um, to both the local and overseas markets. I'm not going to go through nine and 10. Some of the factors affecting the country's competitiveness in the GDCs. Um, one is the human capital. Um, they say the training of workers at all levels is required in the process since certification requires record keeping and a number of empl well, employees or workers are challenged because of de deficiencies in literacy and numeracy. Standards and certification was also recognized as another issue. Of the three players which had identified, um, BFL and the two competitors, um, one has not attained any certification, one has HACCP certification, and the third has ISO. Um, the National System of Innovation, St. Lucia is, as they have determined, well advanced technologically. Um, the business environment also is a factor affecting the country's competitiveness. The Eastern Caribbean currency is pegged against the US dollar and the rate is fixed. The rates against other currencies fluctuate on a daily basis, however, this does not seem to have an adverse effect on the island's ability to generate revenue from product. Some of the key findings of this case research, there's a high level of bureaucracy within government departments and obviously this causes significant delays, bottlenecks, and increased costs to the manufacturing and cost to the final product. There is some irregular supply of raw materials resulting from outdated agricultural methods. And I don't think that this particular issue is, is peculiar either to St. Lucia, but you'll find fairly outdated agricultural methods across the Caribbean. This notwithstanding government's heavy input and subsidizing of um, the agricultural sector. And, and I'm speaking um, from my own knowledge in the case of Barbados as well. Standards and certification are important. Thank you. And I think Levi had mentioned this. Um, the fiscal incentive legislation, as they see it, should be revisited. And linkages with the Ministry of Agriculture can be described as weak. And I think they would be a key strategic stakeholder, and that would obviously need to be um, improved. Farmers do not have access to financial resources, and if they don't, then they can't produce the quality at the time that Baron Foods would like. Policies to upgrade the human resource base of the country um, are not um, clearly articulated. Lessons learned, I'm not sure I can go through all of them. Um, well, they're saying approaching business in a, cre uh, in a very creative manner and collaborative fashion. We've spoken about the well-trained workforce. They talked about innovation, 
implementation of standards as being critical. Um, identification of niche markets is a critical factor as well. Um, they cited taking advantage of all incentives and concessions provided by government, if those are indeed forthcoming, but if you have the Ministry of Agriculture not being a, a key stakeholder, that, that there might be um, some issues. A high level of foresight and vision from management and avoid the introduction of a wide range of products within a short space of time. Recommendations. The provision of appropriate incentives, uh, not only to um, barren fools, but obviously to the agricultural sector as well. One that is uh, mentioned here, greenhouses, which should be actively promoted among all farmers and incentives should be given to farmers who use modern technology and coming up. Um, recommendations to improve efficiency. Um, exporters should be placed on a list, on a priority list to allow for greater efficiency and quick turnaround for processing um, documentation. And I'm sure this issue of process efficiency will um, emerge in the discussions as well. Effective coordination of the industry, bringing together stakeholders who possess knowledge, skills, resources to develop and deliver appropriate financial products and services, and provision to relevant education and training activities. Um, introduce agriculture in all schools, starting from the primary level, and there should be regular visits by extension officers to farmers, and this sounds like something that emerged out of the um, discussions with the with barren foods. Didn't go into the last recommendation because my time is up. Thank you very much.